Now let's talk about different types of VPN protocols. Okay, so I will be talking about PPP and PPTP, L2TP and IPsec. So let's first talk about PPP. Uh, one moment, sorry. Yeah, so what is PPP? It is point to point protocol, okay? So let me go back to the drawing board here. Okay, so now we are talking about PPP, point to point protocol. Now, uh, earlier, although I'm not sure if, I mean, I don't think it is uh, such connections are used these days, but earlier, we used to have these links, which were mainly meant for telephone voice data. So, and those were called serial links. Serial links or serial lines, one and the same thing. So you had these, your ISP. ISPs pop, points of point of presence. And then you would have your own computer. And so you had these direct connections from your home from your computer home computer to your isp's point of presence pop and this this used to be a serial line now what is meant by a serial line a serial line is that telecommunication link which is which was built for telephone voice data so it did not understand anything about the traffic that was generated from this computer so if you try to send some traffic some tcp ip traffic that the computers generate over the serial link it would not understand it because this was meant for transmitting telephone voice data okay so back in the day what used to happen was people would connect to the internet by first dialing up to this isp's point of presence and then from there on they would go out to the internet but like i said this is a serial line right it is meant for transmitting voice data it is not meant for sending computers data so how would that work because it would not understand computers data for the dial-up connection so that is why uh, this PPP protocol was developed, point-to-point -point protocol. So what PPP does is that the traffic that is initiated from this computer, the computer's traffic, if it were to be sent out as it is, this serial line will not understand the traffic and it will not make any sense to the receiving side. So PPP actually translates that traffic, the computer-generated traffic in such a way so that it can travel successfully, so that it can traverse successfully over the serial line and over to the ISP's point of presence. Okay, so that is the goal of PPP, to send TCP IP traffic over a serial line or a serial link, okay? Now, there are various options, and because you have to connect to the internet, you have to authenticate yourself as well, correct? So the authentication options that PPP provides are PAP, CHAP, and EAP. But before I move to that, let me go back to the drawing, uh, to the mind map here. So PPP is point-to-point -point protocol. It works at data link layer, okay? Uh, and PPP is used to send TCP IP traffic over a serial line, meaning a line that was mainly meant for telephone voice data. <clears throat> Sorry. A serial line does not understand computers' protocols, like I said before, like TCP IP, et cetera. So when a user needs to send data over a serial line, it needs to be encapsulated or it needs to be converted into the correct format so that the serial link can understand it. And that job is done by PPP, point-to-point -point protocol. And in order to authenticate the user, PPP has various authentication options. What are those options? Let's take a look. So these are the three authentication options that are provided by PPP, PAP, CHAP, and EAP. So what is the difference between these three options? Let's take a look. Let's go back to the drawing. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I need a drawing board for that. So, P, oh, so let's talk about PAP first. Uh, so PAP stands for Password Authentication Protocol. Now, it is a very, very simple protocol and not a very secure option. Why is that? Because it requires user to enter username and password, which are sent in clear text. Hence, it is not a secure option. So it's a, it's a very old option, uh, which is actually not really, not even supported by a lot of devices these days because it's a very simple protocol. It only requires the user to enter a username and password. And those details as well are sent over the network in clear text. So anybody can look into that traffic if they were to 
snoop into the on, on into that traffic okay so that is one option that is available a slightly more option a, a slightly more secure option that is available is called chap which stands for challenge handshake authentication protocol so how does chap work let me go back to the drawing board now so let's say you have some authentication server so let's say this is a client and this is some authentication server so this is a client and this is authentication server now this client wants to authenticate to this authentication server using chap let's say they have agreed to use chap as the authentication protocol so with pap what used to happen was that the client would send would enter the username and password and that would be sent over the network in clear text to the authentication server right but in chap that is that is not what that happens that is not what happens so with chap it's so, so chap stands for challenge handshake authentication protocol so in chap the password is actually never transmitted over the network so the way it works is it sends an authentic it sends an authentication request to the server saying that hey i want to authenticate myself so the authentication server has a database right of all the usernames and passwords so it says all right so your username is whatever abc123 and i see that you have a password also configured here so what authentication server does is authentication server sends a random value to this client a send a random value for example it could send it a value like xyz72 a b zero one it could send a random value to this client okay and then it will challenge the client to encrypt this value and then send the encrypted value back so what the client would do is client would receive this random value xyz72 ab01 and it will encrypt this value with his own using his own password as the key for encryption okay so because encryption requires key right so what it does is it will use his own password as the key and then encrypt this value this random value so this random value will be will be encrypted so let's say it, it comes out to be one two zero a z one seven a b let's say this is the encrypted uh encrypted text for this plain text and then it will send this encrypted text to this server back to this authentication server and now this authentication server will try to decrypt this value using the password that is stored against this user's username so if this user's password is let's say uh cisco then this will be stored here right so it will decrypt this this uh, encrypted text using the value using the key as using cisco as the key and it will get some plain text right so ideally that plain text would be xyz 72 ab01 and if it matches with what this authentication server had originally sent to the client it means that the client used the right key the right password to encrypt it right because the authentication server also has the same key the same password in its own database and they were both able to it was able to decrypt the value to its to back to its original value so it will tell the authentication server that the client has the right password which it used as the key to encrypt the random value that was sent by the authentication server so this is how chap works that is why it is called a challenge handshake authentication protocol where the password that never is actually transmitted over the network okay so that is chap so as it says here with chap the password is not sent over the network rather the authentication server sends a random value to the user the user system using the password as encryption key encrypts the random value and sends the encrypted value back to the server the server decrypts it using the user's password and if the decrypted value matches the original value sent by the server it means that the user must have used the right password and that user is authenticated all right so that was the second authentication option now the third authentication option that is available under ppp is called eep it stands for extensible authentication protocol it's a protocol that is used by various other uh, frameworks as well like it is used in in wireless as well but it is not limited to wireless okay but you will see it, uh, it being this term being used extensively when it comes to wireless so what exactly is eep extensible authentication protocol as the name says it is an it is extensible which means that it is it is not exactly a single protocol like pap or chap rather it's a framework so it is not exactly a protocol in, in itself but it's a framework so the way it works is that 
when the two parties are trying to communicate they first of all check whether they are they are eep compatible or not whether they are configured to use eep or not and if the two parties are in fact configured to use eep then they say all right yeah you support eep i support eep i've been configured to use eep you have been configured to use eep then all right let's use eep and then once they have agreed to use eep then they actually uh, negotiate other parameters of authentication then they actually negotiate what exactly is it that we need to use to authenticate should we use some password should we use some digital certificate should we use some otp some one time password or maybe some token or some biometric mechanism to authenticate so that is what they agree upon and once they have agreed upon the exact mechanism then the authentication happens all right so that is why i said eep is not exactly a protocol in itself rather it's a framework which allows the two communicating parties to agree upon a specific authentication mechanism like tokens biometric password digital certificates or anything else so if both parties have eep capabilities they can then choose to use one of the many supported authentication options okay so that was ppp and its authentication options